Hi, my name is Douglas, and I'm applying to the NYU Cron Institute for Mathematics. I wanted to first talk about why I feel drawn to go to graduate school in mathematics, and in particular at NYU. When I first started off college, I was, going to, I was taking econ courses as well, thinking I might want to study economics in graduate school. My second year, I was taking the first course in intro, intro econ sequence, along with my first analysis and linear algebra course. While I did enjoy my econ classes, my math classes were totally different. I was on the edge of my seat and excited to attend class every day, even when the class was early in the morning. There was no comparison between these experiences, and I knew that there was really no decision to be made. I had to focus on math. Emmanuel Courant has so many amazing professors studying, studying really cool topics. My favorite areas of math are those with tangible components, and I would love to make contributions to the study of complicated systems such as stochastic dynamical systems or par partial differential equations. And NYU is the perfect place to do this, especially because I want to do research with an eye towards what's actually going to help people solve real-world real problems. One of my favorite things about mathematics is the elegance that comes from finding just the right way to view a problem. And so I wanted to spend a little, a, a little bit talking about one of my favorite connections in math, that between Markov chains and linear algebra. A Markov chain is formally defined as a sequence of random variables such that the nth random variable, given all the previous states, only depends on the uh, random variable one previous. So it has sort of has, has memory one, right? Uh, so this is in a discrete case. Um, so an example is uh, we have this this mouse that's sort of uh, running around, and sometimes it's at food, and it stays at food. It has 0.6 chance of staying at food if it's at food, and sometimes it goes to play. Sometimes it's at play, and it stays at play a long time, and then sometimes it goes to food. Right, and so uh, these things are really cool and are used to study a lot of things, a lot of uh, things in nature. Uh, but we might uh, think like, okay, we have two state spaces, that's fine, I can draw it. But what if we have 50? Like, how, how are we going to understand this thing? How are we going to even write it down? And so one way you might think to store this data is in a matrix like this. So given that we start at food, the uh, chance that we go to food is 0.6. Uh, given that we start in this row, the chance we go to the state associated with this column is given by this entry, right? So given that we start here, the chance we go for the play is, is 0.8. Uh, and so the cool thing is this, this isn't just a way to store the data. This actually gives us a really cool dynamical interpretation um, and allows us to connect ideas from linear algebra to study these, to study Markov chains. Uh, so specifically, uh, let's say you start at x0, which here is starting at food. So this is all the, the mass is concentrated at food and zero at play. Uh, the uh, distribution of the next time step is actually given by x0 hit with this matrix P on the right. And then in the third time step, it's given by this thing hit with P, which is just the original x0 hit with P squared. Right, so this is so this is is kind of cool, and it connects this uh, matrix and uh, allows us to use all of our, our tools in linear algebra to study this this Markov chain. Uh, so specifically, um, the invariant distribution of this Markov chain, which is defined as the distribution, or if it exists, the distribution such that if you push it forward one time step, remains the same, is actually uh, an eigenvector of p. Uh, normalized so that it sums to 1 and our entry is all positive with eigenvalue 1. And so under certain conditions with, uh, with P, we can actually, this uh, um, eigenspace is, uh, can, is, has dimension 1 and, is, uh, it, and so this eigenvector is sort of unique um, and we can actually find it using basic linear algebra. 